Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two wide receivers will be looking to be number one targets on the field in today's game. It's Watkins' it's Rams going up against Stefan Diggs' it's Vikings. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, it's one of the new jewels of the NFL, no doubt, as you get a look inside U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Los Angeles Rams. Hello, folks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And a moment ago, Larry gave us a look at the two number one receivers that will be facing off here. But you think it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. Both these teams, they've got a number of pass-catching options. And I'm eager to see how both teams will attack the opposite defenses because is it going to be where they're going to be a dart-throwing team, throw it short and try to make plays that way? Or will the long ball be a part of it? But you're right, lots of options for both of these squads. Kai Forbath set to kick it away for the Vikings. And off we go from the Twin Cities. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. This L.A. Rams offense led by Jared Goff has been fun to watch this year. They were fun to watch last week. 51 points in the win over the New York Giants. So what a turnaround from last year. I just don't think you can underestimate how good coaching and talent, when it meshes, this is what you get. Jared Goff went number one in the draft for a reason. Not because people just say, oh, we hope he can play. They knew he could play. And now, with Sean McVay, the new head coach, bringing in his system and, and utilizing it for his talents, the Rams are going to continue to elevate. And Goff had 311 yards last week on just 14 completions. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. From the gun, here's Gaughan. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It'll be a loss of one. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read. Better execution. And done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way. Ran to the football. And caused a nice play for lost yardage. A little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. A shotgun snap for Gaughan. Going up top for Cup. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Trust me, Brandon, I'm not about to try and take your job. I can't do what you do. But that wasn't just three and out. That felt like three and backwards. That's exactly what it was. Uh, you can have my job whenever you want it. Uh, the drive that you're looking for, though, probably going forward, bad start to the ball game. Yeah, not the way to get things going. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. Here's Sherrill's. When it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. 
They'll be led out by their six-year quarterback from Houston, and that's Case Keenum. Incredible numbers at the University of Houston. In fact, they retired his jersey in 2016. Hasn't put up the same kind of numbers in the NFL. A lot of it hasn't had consistent starting opportunities. But if you've got a guy that you want on your ball club that understands your offense through and through, Case Keenum will be that guy. First carry for Latavius Murray. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. For a lot of people, there are pros and cons to playing close to home in the NFL. But for Adam Thielen, it's nothing but pros. Grew up not too far from the Twin Cities, loves being a Viking, and is a really dependable third down receiver. See if they stay on the ground for second down. All right, here we go. Ah! Off play action. Keenum. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. They hit that crossing route really well. Excellent timing, puts it right on him, and he keeps running. Yeah, turned it upfield for good yardage. of his quick feet but not a whole lot of space down at the 30. Yeah, give him four yards there it'll be second and six. The starters on defense here for Los Angeles. Brandon McConnor Barwin came out of the University of Cincinnati. The thing I remember most about him was what he did while he was in college. Tight end played on the basketball team before moving over to defensive end at the behest of his head coach and boy has that paid off well for him. Started 96 consecutive games in Philadelphia, signed with the Rams in the offseason to play outside linebacker again with a comfort zone in that defense. Let's go! Green, 39! That was second down one for Murray. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Looking to throw on third and two. Keenum and complete right side to tight end Rudolph. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Let's go! 319! Ah! They'll run it now out of the gun. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Let's go, let's bring it. Let's bring it. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green. Now the Georgia Southern man. This is Jarek McKinnon. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. 
That O line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. From the gun, it's Keenum. He's got his man. It's taken in for a freaking touchdown. Stephon Diggs, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings have taken a first-quarter lead. An out route there for the score, a quick out route there for the score. Yeah, you're not really serving the defense on this one. You're just counting on timing, making this play happen. One, two, balls out of his hands, knows where he's going, just puts it to the outside. Touchdown. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So that drive in total eight plays. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Four bath out to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23 yard line. And the Rams getting set to go now. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here at second and 12. Goff now looks to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Quickly now a look at the defensive starters for Minnesota. Daniil Hunter is an excellent example of the right player, the right athlete meeting the right scheme. And he found it in Minnesota under head coach Mike Zimmer. Many people thought he might have been too undersized to play defensive end. But Zim saw was a heck of a guy off the edge. Super quickness. Someone who can get to the quarterback in the right situations. And that's how he deploys him. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. Gun, gone. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with the rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, 
a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And coming up on their second drive of the game, had the touchdown last time out. Now they have the football back. Chance to really seize early momentum. Feels to me like they had a really excellent week of practice that it all came together. But I'll bet you it got galvanized in the locker room in pregame. Somehow I think the head coach, his oratorical skills were on point. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. Second down, here's Keenan. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. They fake the handoff. Now Keenum. He's going to air one out. And the defense loses him. It's complete. And he's going to be ripped down by the face mask at the end of this. And that's going to add 15 more onto the end of this thing. Tack on 15 more for the face mask, and that becomes a huge play. Big pass gets caught on you. You're doing everything possible to get him on the ground, and sometimes you end up grabbing the face mask. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Following the penalty, it's Murray. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Second down, they need less than a yard to pick up the first. Again, it's Murray. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Well, after what we just saw, we know that with third down coming up, this is not a gimme for the offense. They've got to figure out what they want to do. Do they challenge their offensive line and try and run it, or do they go ahead and concede that this is a tough defense and put it in the air? All right, here we go. They'll run here. It's Murray. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. On every snap, a defense is trying to establish who they are. But on third and short, that's really when you put it out there and tell people who you are. And that's exactly what they did. For the offense, they're looking at their offensive line and saying, guys, where are you? We need you on those plays. 
On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And Forbath will put this one through, and the lead moves to 10 zip. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point, so no problems converting there. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Now a play fake here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. the offense lining up first and ten. Now gone. That's caught by his rookie tight end. It's Gerald Everett. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back right there at the 43. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Sammy Watkins, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because, like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. Third and short, they'll try option left. He may try and run for this. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A solid gain of seven yards that time on the keeper at a first down. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. 
And a solid run down inside the 30. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. The play fake to Gurley, now gone. Blitz coming and down he goes. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is, because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Here's Goff. And he's going to go down again. Anthony Barr. He's the one to get him this time. And back-to-back -back sacks are going to bring up a fourth down. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. And before the punt, time is going to run out on this first quarter. 10-zip our score. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Vikings. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Let's go! Boom, landing! Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Don't forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Two yards gets him back to where they started, but now third and 10. Eight 
The Vikings on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, Keenum. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. Connor Barwin in there to get him for a loss of three. And it'll be fourth down. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. Ryan Quigley, fifth-year man from Boston College, in to punt it away. Standing just outside his own goal line. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Rams are going offense here for the first and ten. And the Rams now coming out on the field. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. down gone it's a short one here complete to his tight end the completion good for three and it's second down it's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up boy then you've got real trouble trying to get him down but they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down Second down, this is Gurley. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And getting this chest shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him, that full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. Gurley again here on first down. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid-type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. This is third and one. Very likely four-down territory even if they don't get it, though. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first.
And he'll give it here to his running back. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Anthony Barr got a real education at UCLA in playing not just his normal position of stand-up outside linebacker, but down defensive end. So he had to incorporate a variety of moves, take on bigger people. So he learned great leverage while he was there. That really helps him when he's trying to stop people running the ball. Born in South Bend, Indiana. Thought about going back to go to Notre Dame, but you're right. Great career at UCLA and now a great career in the NFL. Now whistles and a flag down. I think one of the Rams linemen might have moved. Ball start offense. That's going to set him back five yards. And here comes play number six on this drive. Following the penalty, it's Gurley. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. They get just a yard back there, and now they'll be looking at a tough third and 15. The Rams on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and 15. To throw is gone. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. This from 54 yards away. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And our attention here turns to Latavius Murray. He's hoping to get it going. They're hoping to get him going, too. You know, he's about ready to pop one here in the second quarter. He's hoping. And his offensive line teammates, they want to get one of those, too, because they want to continue to run the football. Most offensive linemen like that part of the game better than pass protection because they're not taking blows. Right. They're actually dealing them out. So what they want to do is show the coaches, hey, if we pop one, we're having success. That way, they won't go away from the running game. He'll be hoping to pop one, break one here this go around. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. This is Murray, and he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. First down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. This is Murray. <laughs> a big 
hit. Knocked down sideways. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. They run it with McKinnon. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. What's that, five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. The Vikings on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. A shotgun snap for Keenum. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. A handoff. It's Murray. He winds up getting only a couple there down to the 29. the handoff. Now Keenum. Nowhere to turn here and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Mark Barron in there to sack him for a loss of six. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop it. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. It's Keenum that escapes the sack. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Michael Brockers in there to take him down and to take us to the two-minute warning. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Here's Ryan Quigley now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Up, 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 up. 
They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21 yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And they're trying to line up quickly here. Goff urging them on. Here's Goff. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Rams on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and five. Here's gone. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Cheryl's to return it. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Now Case Keenum in the offense heading back onto the field. He's got to be feeling pretty good. Playing well. Team has the lead, so just looking to mount a drive here that ends in the end zone. And all quarterbacks will tell you, hey, we love a running game, helps us out. But at the end of the day, they want to rely on their arm, throw the football, feel good about things, keep things moving in the right direction. Right now, that's exactly what we're seeing. And we'll see if that continues. Carries piling up. It's Murray again. Space to maneuver at the 40. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That good for 19 at a first down. But last year, I'm not sure we saw very many of those runs, did we, from the Vikings? I mean, they had the poorest rushing attack in the league. Just 75 yards per game, but carries like the one we just saw. That'll help bolster that average. Yeah, certainly, and they tried to beef up the offensive line in the offseason, brought in Latavius Murray, and then drafted Dalvin Cook out of Florida State. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. set of downs here. Right, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. Shotgun snap for Keenum. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch. Especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds. Toe tapping. And of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Second down to the offense, needing five yards. Working from the gun, Keenum. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. 
They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown of this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. The intended receiver was Laquan Treadwell, and that'll bring up second down. NFL quarterbacks work so hard on their mechanics, and they do so much repetition in practice, offseason, the whole deal. They expect it to be autopilot once the game start. That way it eliminates any type of pressure of the game, pressure of people in your face, all of that. That didn't shine through on that throw, though, did it? No. A little bit of a dangerous pass and off target, too. His throw caught right around the six. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Second down is Keenum. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. From the right hash, this from 33. will put this one through. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Vikings are happy to be sitting in the locker room with a lead. The Rams won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Vikings have it on second and five. Diggs is by himself here, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 33-yard line. Vikings now later on the drive. Keenum's on point with the throw, and he caps off the seven-play drive with a score as they get out to a 7-0 lead. Final seconds in the first half. Keenum's going to find his mark, and he'll be tackled at the six-yard line. And with that, we'll send you back to 
Minneapolis where Brandon and Charles are on the call. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And now running right through it. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. This is sort of what you would call the put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Green 39! Green 39! Second half starts with a run by Murray. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Let's go! Move Now Keenum throwing on second. And Rudolph has it left side. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. penetration here he'll get this down only to about the 49 yard line just a yard on the pickup there and it'll bring up a second and nine second down looking left side and he's got a man that's Bell that throw good for only a couple it brings up third down how about the timing on that one boy they were in sync weren't they three-step drop balls out of his hands right to the tight end nice completion just like they do it in practice the Vikings on third down they've hit four of seven this is third and seven From the gun, here's Keenum. And that is incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Now the attention turns back to the Rams' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. 
They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Time to establish the run game here. Gurley. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. A shotgun snap for gone. Over the middle, that's hauled in by Cup. A very tough run, but for a short gain out near the 32. The completion good for three, and it's second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Now a handoff for Gurley. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. The Rams on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Now gone. And this is caught by Watkins. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Now a handoff as they run left side. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. And here comes play number six on this drive. Back to the ground, this time with Gurley. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Second down following the run. Again they run with Gurley. 
And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. It's a loss of two, now third down. And that's another stop for the defense, something we've seen all game long. They've been on fire today. No matter what's called by the offense, they've had an answer for it. The Rams on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This is third and 11. Out of the gun. Golf. And this is going to be incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Zerline's kick is good. And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13 to 3. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time, and he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. you got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level, and he's able to get back on track. the main field goal. Zerline back out there now to send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. And now out comes Minnesota. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll try and get the running game going here with Murray. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. A 20th carry coming up now for Murray. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. The Vikings on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and seven. Here's Keenum. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. fake here on first down and his throw is going to be incomplete he was looking for his tight end there Kyle Rudolph and now it's second down well on that incompletion let's discuss how week nine on Sunday November 5th there was a full moon and there yes. were some full moon happenings in the NFL wasn't there there certainly were and think about it this way Blair Walsh who was 16 for 17 in field goals when the game began against Washington 
He missed three for Seattle in that game. Might have been the difference. Julio Jones. Yeah, drop pass in the end zone. They could have won the game. When does Julio Jones drop passes, especially open as he was there? And how about two teams putting 51 points on the board? The Los Angeles Rams against the Giants. And, of course, Philadelphia did it against Denver. Denver, the number one defense in the league. Full moon. So a third and ten, and defensively, a dime look. Six DBs. Here we go now. Three and 19. Three and 19. Keenum throwing once more. <laughs> Open man is stealing his complete. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. scrimmage no gain on the play there second down nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive agreed and they really needed that one for confidence just to feel a little bit better but I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run this drive has gone pretty well I could come right back at them now Keenum taken down trying to do a little too much getting outside of the pocket and it results in a sack the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary let's just face it this offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush it's been demonstrated time and time again Vikings on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This is third and 10. Green, 39. Green, From the gun, it's Keenum. And that is incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, close game, second half. You obviously hate to leave three out on the field. Especially in a game like this when you know points are hard to come by. That was one of their best opportunities so far. And they come away with nothing. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. Now a first down throw, gone. Right side complete, that's Woods. A good pick up there, 26 yards. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. On 
First down, it's Gurley. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Another carry now for Gurley. And Gurley fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. And fortunately for him, he's able to get it back. But it will be a loss on the play. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. From the gun, here's Goff. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Linval Joseph in there to drop it for a 40-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. On now is the big leg of Greg Zerline. He has hit from as far as 61 away in his career. This will be from 56 yards out. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage. But you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. Here's Murray. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. Second down run for Murray. And he'll get this across midfield to the 48. Seven yards on the carry. Make it third and four coming up. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. The Vikings on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and four. Let's go! 
Now Keenum. And he's able to find Diggs. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 23 yards on the play. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish. The strategy would tell you, run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. So here we go, first and 10 now. Out of the gun, Keenum. He'll find Thielen working the middle. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. To throw, it's Keenum. Throw left side, complete. That's Morgan. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. to add the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. Five plays there on that drive. And it's polished off by a Viking score. Four bath out to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And last time out, another missed field goal, so maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. First and ten, Golf toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. That'll bring up second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Second and ten, golf again. And he comes back with one complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Golf hitting Woods for a Rams first. 
defensively, they just lost him. He was waving his arms saying, I'm wide open. They found it. Yeah, and it's so interesting about when a receiver starts to wave his arms because some guys right off the line of scrimmage, they declare themselves open. You know, those guys throw the one arm up, right. hit me right now. In this case, he was so wide open that he was frantically trying to get his attention to make sure he got the football. And then I'm sure his only thought when the ball was in the air, don't drop it. Had too much time to think. down gone he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete Second and ten, gone. And that's incomplete. The Rams on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for ten. This is third and ten. Throwing again is gone. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. And now a first down following that long game. To the air again. Gone. Now left, he's got it to Everett. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. The completion good for three and it's second down. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, He's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. Here we go with second and seven. Again, golf. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Shamar Steven breaking throw to get him for a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. To throw is Goff. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Their already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant.
They begin the drive with a run by Murray. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. They run with Murray, and they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now, that's a nice play. <laughs> Got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking at the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, whatever way, they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth-quarter stop? They'll run it now, out of the gun. And some room to maneuver. 25 yards, the pick up there, and also a first down. Well, you know what they say about the best laid plans, partner. <laughs> I mean, this one was totally foiled. They played for the pass. The idea was if you want to run it, that's fine. We'll rally up and make the tackle, except... They didn't get it done. <laughs> yeah, it's third and long, and a big run there. How about that? So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run the counter with Murray. Oh, and now he bowls him over. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Delayed game, offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still second down. game. He gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation and taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. All right, here we go. Boom, landed. They'll run it now, out of the gun. <laughs> Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first, thanks to a flashy little spin move. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Hurry up, here we go. Three, 19. Murray. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. 
And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Again, it's Murray. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves them with a third and three. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. Keenum. This will be caught at about the five. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Five yards to go for the offense. First down and goal from that five-yard line. They'll try to run it in with Murray. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. drive here and it goes on and on offense working with a second and goal now from the three They're able to get a couple here but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one Brandon now we find out what their definition of commitment is they've run it on the first two plays do they come back and do it again? They're that much closer to getting into the end zone. Yeah, inching closer and really knocking on the door now. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. All right, here we go. Keenum to throw on third and one. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Stephon Diggs, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. Is it okay if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over? Because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you can, you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I, I think you're exactly right. You could see them sag on their sideline. And I think this one might just be over. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Forbath out to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. Oh, able to avoid him. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. It caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. Hey, hey, hey. 
Goff on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. From the 50, it's gone. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. It's a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Desperation time for Goff on fourth. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So the contact came before the ball got there, and the flag is thrown. Timing is everything, isn't it? And it's so hard to cover these great receivers. They have such great body control, and they can fake you out. In this case, as you described, got there before the ball got to the receiver. Penalty flag had to come out. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Now Goff on first down. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Ten yards still left on second down. Shotgun snap for goal. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Tom Johnson in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. Third and long. It's gone. Now a desperation throw. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Tavon Austin from 21 yards away. And the Rams are able to draw a bit closer. Well, that's what I call an answer right there. They gave up a sack on the previous play. How about what they did to finish things off, turning it right back around? That's the response, and that O-line feels a lot better now, don't they? Yeah, without a doubt, because give up the sack on the previous play, that just hurts those guys, because they never want to see their guy get hit. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown.
They're going to keep it on the ground. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offense has been a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. So it would no doubt be a miracle comeback from here, but let's see what they can do starting with the onside kick. And the Vikings able to recover. The hands team does its job. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. time to the tailback and just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine partner you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm but when you run the ball in the first play of the drive that's not a tendency breaker at all that's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward all right, here we go. Ah! they go with Murray again and able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him six on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long. <laughs>